Okay, shall I move over to sharing my screen now for the introduction? Wonderful. Okay, it is now um, midday, um, Central European time. So um, it is my pleasure to welcome you to day three of the Living Through Touch uh, Symposium. Uh, my name is Raymond Holt. Um, I'm from the University of Leeds. I'm part of the Suitcase uh, Project team. So I'll be introducing you to the day and uh, chairing one of the sessions later on. Now, hopefully my slides are actually going to advance. Otherwise we'll be trapped looking at the first slide forever. Here we go. Um, just to give you a quick um, reminder about the suitcase project. It stands for smart, user-friendly, interactive, actual, Cognition Enhancer yields extended sensor sphere. And it is a, well, a three year project originally, but it's been extended to three and a half years owing to the uh, COVID 19 pandemic. And it was funded through the European Union's Horizon 2020 scheme. It involves um, five academic partners and two industrial partners from seven countries, um, which I will list um, across the right hand side here. So our Academic partners are the University of Boros in Sweden, the Center for Research and Technology Hellas in Greece, the University of Offenburg in Germany, the University of Leeds in the United Kingdom, and Eindhoven University of Technology in the Netherlands. And the two industrial partners have been um, Les Dwat Kirev in France and Harpo uh, based in Poland. And the focus of the project is on developing what we're calling haptic, intelligent, personalized interfaces or hippies in order to aid people with deaf blindness in communicating and perceiving their environment. And this is the, the third and final day of the symposium. Um, on the first day, uh, we talked about the results and outcomes of the suitcase project. So some of the technologies that have been developed and some of the lessons that we've learned as a result of carrying out the research. Yesterday, we moved on to um, other related research in the area of um, deaf blindness and assistive technology. So looking at some of the um, linguistic and um, uh, similar research and also some of the questions about how we bridge the gap between research, developing novel approaches and te uh, technologies, and actually getting those technologies to a place where they can be used. Today, we will finish the symposium by talking about, firstly, policy um, and how things like regulation and government policies affect, firstly, technology, but also um, the lives of people with deaf blindness. And this is a really um, important consideration in terms of the project. And then we will move on to considering the future beyond suitcase. The, the project ends um, in just over a month's time. So what we want to think about is how we go about approaching um, future projects in order to carry on the work that has been undertaken. The um, the day will be divided into two halves. So in the, um, the first part will be all about policy aspects, um, divided into three sessions. The first one, looking at the results of the policy study that was undertaken as part of the suitcase project. Um, and that was a really important part of the project because inevitably policy affects the technologies that can be used, but also it has a huge effect on um, people's ability to obtain technologies or get funding for technologies or whether they even need technologies or whether other sorts of support may be available. So looking at the different approaches 
um, in different countries and how these are similar or different. It's been an important part of the project. Um, then we will be looking at the perspectives of, perspectives of policy and decision makers, those who are actually involved in making policy. Um, and then we will open up for a panel discussion, um, drawing together both those who've been doing the policy study and those who've been presenting on um, policy and decision making to discuss what we can do with the lessons learned from this project. Then we will finish the day by looking to the future. So we will first have a session about some great initiatives from the user community, um, and then move on to uh, talking with our advisory board about some of their experiences and um, the paths forward. Uh, finally, we'll finish the day by asking what next and an open discussion on what we can do in terms of future projects um, or future work in order to keep up the momentum um, that we've developed and the networks that have been developing in the course of this um, project, as well as how we might work together with others um, in the future. So I will just close with a few um, items of housekeeping. Um, you should find down at the bottom of your screen that there is a question and answer button labeled Q and A. Um, if you are an attendee, you can uh, press that and it will bring up a box where you can enter um, questions uh, for the panelists and they will try to answer them during the course of the, uh, the session. We allow a little bit of time at the end of each session uh, for answering questions. Um, you can access live closed captions um, using the uh, transcript button, um, which would again be down at the bottom of the screen. Um, you can either watch them as closed captions or have uh, the full transcript coming up at the side of the screen. From the full transcript, you can opt to save the transcript if you would like to keep it for um, future reference. Um, only panelists can unmute themselves. Um, so if you're an attendee and you would like to speak in order to make a comment rather than typing it, uh, please let us know in the chat um, and we will organize uh, for you to be unmuted. Um, also, um, just a quick reminder for our panelists, um, if you could please speak slowly and clearly, uh, particularly for the sake of our interpreters. Um, we have both Libris and International Sign Language interpreters um, here today. And if we speak too quickly, it makes it difficult for them to uh, do the live translation. Um, all that remains is for me to say, enjoy the symposium. Um, and I will now hand over um, to the first session. Thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to some of you. Um, I am happy to welcome you to this session. I am Elena Mesevichute from the University of Boros, and I will chair the session um, in which we will present the policy reports from five countries and the EU, uh, which is another part of the suitcase results that you have heard on the first day. The policy report will cover the following, the issues of people with deaf blindness, the human rights laws and access to equipment and accessibility, and the regulation of new technologies. Policy reports can be found on the link that is put in the chat. Uh, International report is not yet available, um, but uh, you will find it later on on the same link. Uh, let me introduce the presenters only by name uh, and they will give more details about themselves in their presentations. Um, you most probably know Sarah Woodin from the UK, uh, Josie Smith from the Netherlands, Eleni um, Strati from Greece, Sabrina Weller 
from Germany and more Valkvist in Sweden. I will repeat uh, what Ray has already said, uh, that you can uh, put your questions in the question and answer box for this session. And if we have time at the end of it, we will try to answer them. Uh, the panelists can put their questions if there, there are some of those in the chat and we will transfer them to the uh, Q&A box. Um, so I will give the first uh, word to Sarah Woodin presenting the report from the UK and the others will be running after her. Please, Sarah. Could I, sorry to interrupt, yes. this is Sarah Woodin from, could I suggest, uh, I think, Obviously, it's not working. It's possible that I might have uploaded um, the wrong version because it's not showing properly. Could I suggest that we go on to the next presentation from the others? And um, if if we have time, we can we can put the um, other other version. Um, we can look at that in a in a session later on if we have time. But but rather than worry about it now, could I suggest we go on to the others just for ease? Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Hello, this is Jose Smith speaking. The Netherlands embrace tech. People in the Netherlands embrace new technologies. Internet connectivity was and is high. Gadgets in every sort and size are welcomed and many start businesses in hardware and software. New technologies and applications are considered to be of great value for enhancing inclusion of individuals with disabilities, both by users, producers and by policymakers. In our research, we found that Dutch tech firms and university scholars are very open to innovative techniques to enable participation in society, work and education of people who have disabilities. Provision is publicly financed. Policymakers support this development by financing the provision of new technologies with public money. The Netherlands have an extensive system in place to finance and provide new apps and hardware to individuals with disabilities if these apps and equipment compensate for their specific disabilities. Equipment can be financed and provided to those who apply by either municipalities, healthcare insurance or the administrative authority, UBV. Much is left to private initiative. What is lacking in the Netherlands is a political sense of urgency to enhance general accessibility of goods, services and products that such that individual adaptations would be less needed. There is also no general framework to consult with people with disabilities on the policy agenda that would support independent living, including using innovative new techniques. Much is left to private initiatives, but if these occur, facilitation can be offered. The policy report for Greece for the project was conducted together with a group of colleagues in the field of disability who have recently formed uh, a non-profit, um, non-governmental organization based in Thessaloniki, Greece called Accessible Limitless Living. Today we will um, briefly um, present the recommendations that come out from the report and will hopefully speak to the different stakeholders in the audience. These are um, centered around what we see as key factors that shape the development and uptake of new technologies from a disability perspective. So the evidence that we have gathered in the report and has informed the recommendations um, follows three main lines of inquiry. Firstly, the extent to which there is explicit recognition of deaf blindness in national policy and official data collection activities. Secondly, levels of supply and demand for new technologies addressing the needs of users with disabilities. And thirdly, the extent to which disability quality is mainstreamed in research and innovation strategies and relevant regulatory frameworks. 
So the first uh, set of recommendations is around recognition of deaf blindness in uh, policy. At the moment, um, there are people with deaf blindness are not recognized as a distinct eligible group, rather access disability provisions identifying primarily as deaf or blind people. But understanding the different types and levels of need is directly linked with ensuring appropriate support and management of resources. So uh, a first recommendation is that there should be recognition of people with the blindness as a group with differentiated compound information and communication needs and social protection needs in existing disability assessment procedures and respectively disaggregate existing administrative data which exists for example um, in the registries of people receiving disability benefits or health provisions or um, pupils in special and mainstream education. And finally, it is important to get a sense of the specific challenges um, people with deaf blindness encounter in accessing support services, education, employment, and mainstream goods and services in Greece currently. The second set of recommendation um, it's about strengthening supply and demand for new technologies that are relevant to persons with disabilities. Assistive technology as such is not currently embedded in disability state provisions in Greece. These tend to be in cash or kind or in the form of support services and this negatively affects demand. At the same time, public and private providers across sectors must ensure accessibility of goods and services and this is a fairly recent legal framework around disability that has been put in place. So it is important to include funding um, that is channeled to people with disabilities for assistive new technology within the existing policy frameworks for health and social protection and at the same time, channel research and development funding or European structural funds for the design, implementation, adoption and use of new technologies um, that support um, access of persons with disabilities to multiple areas of life. It is uh, equally important to um, strengthen the skills of the potential users um, so scale up, especially digital skills that are necessary for using new assistive technology. There are some um, schemes that exist already and target persons with disabilities. But also ensure the training of professionals and practitioners who are involved in disability support provision in the use of new technologies which support participation and social inclusion. The final set of recommendations is really about mainstreaming um, and, and in order to ensure universal coverage and sustainability of efforts. The potential of new technologies for promoting participation and social inclusion uh, for persons with disabilities has only featured in more recent strategic planning um, centered around digital transformation. Um, but it has been lacking in previous or generic research and development strategies. So a recommendation is to steer uh, state budgets for research and innovation in technological development uh, that promotes disability inclusion, actively involving users in the design and evaluation of technological products. Some good examples exist, but efforts uh, are needed for scale up and diffusion. Um, we also need a strong ethical framework with emphasis on non-discrimination, universal design, privacy and safe use of applications, which is currently lacking. It has also been recommended by um, other analysts or um, representative bodies of persons with disabilities to establish 
exhibition centers for new technologies, ensuring relevance for persons with disabilities, where it is possible for them to uh, try and test new applications. And finally, uh, mainstream disability inclusion in the education and training of technology developers. So uh, ideally, um, accessible universal design um, in the technological development will be built in from the start. Thank you. Welcome, dear ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sabrina Weller, and I'm a research associate at the Federal Institute for Vocational Education and Training in Germany. In my talk, I will present the main recommendations of our policy report on deaf blindness, disability, and new technologies in Germany. Before I get started with the recommendations, I want to present some facts about deaf blind people in Germany. In Germany, deaf blindness was recognized as a disability of its own kind at the end of 2016. Since then, it has been possible for the label deaf blind to be entered in the handicap pass for people with a disability. At the moment, there is no reliable data on the number of people who are affected by deaf blindness in Germany. It is estimated that about 2,500 to 10,000 people are affected. Therefore, a nationwide collection of official or representative data on deafblind people, if possible in the form of a panel study, is essential in this context. In Germany, a number of state actors are involved in the financing of ads. This is a very complex and overlapping system, and there is a lack of clarity regarding responsibilities. Therefore, information presentation on available ads and assistance as well as counseling services should be improved and expanded in quality and quantity. At present, there's a particular debate about the regulation of new technologies in the field of image processing and face recognition with questions focused on data privacy in Germany. The needs of people with disability are currently not taken into account in these discussions. Therefore, legal regulation concerning the application of new technologies, including AI, needs to be developed with particular consideration of vulnerable groups. New technologies, information systems and AI applications should not exclude certain user groups from productive work because of sensory disability makes it difficult or impossible to operate systems. To ensure that the use of new technologies does not lead to the exclusion of digital participation by certain groups, accessibility should be taken into account already at the development stage. We therefore recommend a participatory approach. This means that future users should be consulted and involved from the beginning in research and product and related service design so that they meet their needs and wishes. In the context of smart cities, digital transformation should contribute to an improvement in living conditions. The needs of vulnerable groups should be taken into account. However, the participation of people with disabilities and their representatives in smart cities in initiatives seems to be low in Germany. People with disabilities and in particular people with blindness or deaf blindness and their representatives should also get more involved in smart city initiatives to ensure that the needs of the affected people concerning city planning with regard to access to information and pub public services are met. Increasing digital networking has given a rise to new forms of crime, such as hate crime. 
it can be assumed that people with disabilities and impairments face a higher risk of becoming victims of cybercrime. Therefore, the need of personal safety of people with disabilities should be recognized in corresponding policy plans. I really invite you to read our report. You can find the link here on the presentation. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much for your attention. So then I will tell you a bit about the Swedish report on law and policy on deaf blindness, disability and new technologies. My name is Moa Wahlqvist and I work as a researcher at the Audiological Research Center at Örebro University. And I also work as a coordinator at the Swedish National Resource Center for Deaf Blindness in Sweden. I also want to acknowledge my colleague and co-author in this report, uh, Johanna Gustafsson, who works as a senior lecturer, associate professor at Örebro University. Some background. The Swedish population is considered to be digitally experienced and also to have a high degree of lit digital literacy. Digitalization is expected to uh, enable large benefits for society and to create a more inclusive society in Sweden. Still, for some groups, the accessibility of new technologies is not in place and there is a risk of being left behind. And people with deaf blindness are among these groups. Uh, legislators and professionals, they often lack knowledge of what results in barriers for these groups. Uh, and for people with deaf blindness. Uh, when they are to develop policies and on accessible technical aids and consumer products. Several legal frameworks and policies are in place for developing accessibility and new technologies. But again, due to the premises of deaf blindness, the demands for accessibility is often not met. Adaptation may be done for a single sensory loss, hearing or vision, but not for the complexity of dual sensory loss. The support system in Sweden is spread over several authorities and agencies. This means that there are many different actors involved when persons with deaf blindness get support and rehabilitation. So in the report, we give uh, some recommendations for uh, the development of new technologies, accessibility and uh, technical aids. And one can also say that in Sweden, people with deaf blindness are not recognized as a unique group within law and policy. The structures of law and policies in Sweden are on the contrary, organized on the basis of accessibility, discrimination, integrity, and such concepts. Um, but again, to the recommendations, there is a need for guidelines for procurement of technical aids, and this could facilitate the effectiveness for customers, purchasers, and providers as well as lead to cost reductions and improve knowledge at a national level. And uh, there is no comprehensive statistics on the use of technical devices, including the use of new technologies for people with deaf blindness today. And this would be helpful uh, to be able to identify needs and restrictions in the accessibility of both existing technology as well as the new technology. Support, installation and training all needs to be addressed when describing the requirements for people with deaf blindness. <clears throat> uh, 
And as said before, in Sweden today, there is legislation and policies that are in place or under development with regard to accessibility and new technology. However, there is a need for to further develop the access to information about new technologies to people with deaf blindness and other disabilities as well. And finally, to be able to use consumer products as aids uh, should be further developed. Smartphones, iPads and so on are already used by people with deaf blindness. But this also comes with challenges for the professionals who need knowledge of the new technologies. A minor update on a device can create a great challenge for people with deaf blindness. This is, it is time consuming and takes a lot of energy to learn a new technical device. And with that, I want to say thank you for the attention and I look forward to the discussion later on. In this presentation, I will talk about issues from the suitcase research related to the international and especially the European level. We're finalizing a report on the international aspect and especially European work. This will be available soon. Two issues will be briefly covered here, human rights and people with deaf blindness and regulation of new technologies. People with deaf blindness welcomed new technologies People were interested in finding out about using and developing devices. This was especially so where technology did not take the place of human support, but was used alongside interpreter guides and users had ways of controlling how they received assistance and especially the technology itself. Human rights and people with deaf blindness. There are significant numbers of people with deaf blindness in Europe but low recognition in law and policy. There is a strong human rights legal framework in Europe. However, there are gaps for people with deaf blindness. There are patchy rights for accessing personal equipment and sign languages are not recognized as languages everywhere. For people with deaf blindness, an important accessibility issue has to do with environmental description fully knowing what is around oneself beyond the distance that one can reach out to. This knowledge is essential for well-being, learning and participation. However, it is rarely, if ever, recognised in law and policy, in part because it has not previously been possible. When we started the suitcase policy task in 2019, it was not clear that a human rights path would be taken to regulating artificial intelligence. This emphasis was fully, the emphasis, sorry, was fully on the potential of new technologies to stimulate job and jobs and growth, and this is still a priority. However, since that time, there's been an emerging global consensus that new technologies must sit in a human rights framework involving some kind of regulation. We welcome the new European Union AI regulations, which were published in April 2021, as laying the groundwork for an ethical use of AI in society. Regulation of technology is especially important for people with deaf blindness and disabled people compared with the general population. This is because they may rely more on technology for a whole range of daily activities and they may have fewer alternatives readily available. There is evidence of surveillance of disabled people through AI. For example, a UK Brave report in 2020 uncovered targeting of disabled people who were seeking help from council websites and they used their data without consent. Evidence of AI discrimination against disabled people shows that it is not neatly equivalent to gender or race related discrimination. A lack of training data sets for AI has been criticized, but producing these data sets is difficult because of the diversity of disabled people. 
Returning to the 2021 AI regulations, which are the outcome of a long process of development, the risk-based approach and sectoral approach, as well as keeping a human in the loop, are all positive aspects. They may provide safeguards for society as a whole of which disabled people and people with deaf blindness are part. We do understand that these are general regulations. However, disabled people are mostly absent. There are two mentions of disabled people as vulnerable and one reference to disabled people as bearers of rights, but they're not mentioned as users of AI. It will be important that the regulations are developed further so that they work, work well for disabled people. To illustrate this, I will finish by raising one important issue from the suitcase project. Assisting people with deaf blindness to find out about the environment involves object and person recognition, the top activity that people with deaf blindness wanted to use technology for was to walk freely outside the home and to recognize people and things as they did so. The technology has some way to develop before we get to this. However, we know there is much disquiet about the use of AI for face recognition, and this is understandable. There is pressure for it to be banned. However, the AI regulations propose certain exemptions, and we would argue that an exemption needs to be made for people with deaf blindness if they are to gain access to the same information about the environment as everyone else takes for granted. We hope a constructive way forward can be found. Thank you. Thank you so much for all these presentations. And of course, number 13 has done its worst, worst to this session regarding the technology. Sarah, we have three more minutes. Uh, so maybe you can uh, highlight uh, the main points of your UK presentation without going to the, uh, to the presentation itself. Uh, yes. Oop, sorry, let me just. Oh, yes, I can't start my, my video, but I will um, talk to you if you can hear me. Um, yes, can you please switch on your screen so it's, that we see you? Um, I, it is disabled. Um, I, you cannot, oh, okay, it's been enabled now. Thank you. Briefly, um, I would say that my, our recommendations are um, from the UK are very much in line with other colleagues um, in their presentations. Um, it's, it's a matter of degree, there, there are differences. For the UK, a big issue for us has been Brexit, that is the exit of the UK from uh, the European Union. However, the, um, it's important to say that the, the same issues apply um, to us, us in the UK and also regulations will also apply because of the collaborative working between countries. So um, we, we remain very, very tied to, um, to it. I think I'll um, perhaps leave it at there. There is, there is much more detail I, I could say and, and we do, if we have time, I could show the, um, we, we could show the video later, but uh, the presentation later, but perhaps I'll, I'll leave it at there for now. Thank you very Thank much. You. I have a follow-up question. Don't disappear. Um, because you have made both UK and uh, EU um, presentations, do you see any mechanisms or means put into uh, the policies that can harmonize the situation with assistive technologies and especially digital skills training, uh, also including the UK? Um, yes, because um, particularly with digital digital um, uh, law and policy, um, we have had some very important recent directives, EU directives that are um, that apply to the UK and to other, other countries as well. Because they are directives, that means that they, um, that, that they, they apply, but countries can interpret them in, in ways that they wish to. Um, so there is a great, still a great deal of, of harmonization between um, all, all of the, the, the countries. I am 
I know we're coming to the end. I don't know if Eleanor will say something. We, ah, yes. Yes, okay. I'd like to thank all the presenters and all the patient participants going through this. I haven't seen any questions and uh, questions in the question and answer box, but I will hope that you will fill in and or can take it up in the session number 15, which will be devoted to the discussion of the issues in this and the next session. Thank, thank you very much.